How many youth do you expect? Um, realistically, during the... Um, <laughs> uh, we think a realistic assessment during the concerts is about 20,000, and that includes local people. Um, during some of the days when there's not as big a draw, we don't expect, uh, we expect that to be, to be lower. A second quick question. Um, I know that you're encountering um, some issues about overnight camping, and it goes against the policy of the city. So could you tell us your plans for either, or if the city can share any plans about whether they're going to allow it or not? Um, yeah, um, so that's, that's been media the last couple of days. Uh, the camping issue is pretty important to us. We like to keep this self-contained. We would like to have control over the entire event, um, control who comes in and out at night. Um, because of the permit, because that um, our, our responsibility is to remove people by 11 p.m. at this point, and we are going to abide by our our end of the, the permit. So we are coordinating to facilitate the removal of these people by 11 p.m. Um, we do not have any place for them to go as of now. Norm Brown, a uh, member of South City Park, uh, congratulations to you. I think your organization is fine. In, in this rather detailed list uh, of a lot of requirements that you have to meet, nothing is mentioned about finances, and that's my question. Who pays for it? If you do pay for it, does the city pay for it? Uh, obviously, there's a lot of expense involved. Yeah, there's a lot of expense. Um, and as almost everything else on the left, we fundraise nonstop. Um, Record labels are contributing to this, anti-war organizations, individuals, large donors. Um, I mean, all our money is private. We're not receiving any money from the city, um, unlike the other major party that will be happening that week. Um, but in, I'm going to go ahead and fall because I think this is going to come up anyways. Um, as far as finances and our financial responsibility to the park, legally we have none. However, we want this to be a model that we can use in other cities um, in the future. We think. A lot of us feel that the traditional protests that have been organized have not been effective, um, they're people are tired of them, etc. This is something creative and new, and it's being done, this is the first time any uh, protest organization has been required to meet with neighborhood associations, uh, the police, the, the city officials, and it's, it's great, actually. I think um, you find out a lot more about um, people's actual concerns and, and can incorporate that. Uh, but we are committed to returning the park to at least the condition it's in now, hopefully the grass will be a little greener. But um, we, we, we are soliciting some sponsorships and some vendors and we won't receive that money until afterwards and we're going to commit um, a, a percentage of that money directly to the restoration of the park. My name is Adrian Anderson, I live in Congress Park and I also work for the Rocky Mountain Peace and Justice Center in a kind of a two-fold uh, concern. We very much support uh, your activities and plans for the event but uh, some of the residents here uh, may not be aware. We wanted to make sure that you're aware. Um, we have some concerns about the environmental hazard issues at City Park based on the fact that they're using only partially treated sewage sludge to um, effluent to fill the lake and irrigate the grounds. And uh, they're presently in violation of state law notifying people about uh, that. So uh, if you go there and look at it, you'll see it's pretty disgusting looking. And I know that there's an agenda item about it. I had a federal whistleblower case over it. They're also uh, flushing Lowry Landfill Superfund site waste, waste into it. So I have a concern about a health and safety concern about the young people not having dermal contact, deciding to go skinny dip in the lake, that type of thing. So I just want to be a support to you around how to resolve some of those issues and also want to be a resource to the people concerned about the maintenance issues at the park as well, given some of these violations and unusual conditions. And that's something that we really appreciate and we definitely want to work with you. We've also been working with someone um, at the Denver Department of Health and Environment um, and talking to them about some of these issues and ensuring, well, it's my sister, so <laughs> she better or I'll tell my parents. Uh, but we've been working with um, a number of different groups, both environmental and also um, other folks to try and address these issues and these health and safety concerns because they are very important.